Grubler's criteria helps us find the degree of freedom of a given mechanism. But in real life mechanisms, it may not be so ready, readily applicable. Because before we use the formula, we need to find out how many links the mechanism has, how many pairs it uses, what are their individual degrees of freedom, and finally, how they are all connected together. Let us count the number of links in this earth moving equipment. The first link would be uh, the chassis of course, which will serve as the fixed link. Number two would be this hydraulic cylinder. Number three is the plunger that goes into it. Number four is this long link. Five is the bucket. Six is this small link. Seven this triangular link. Eight is a plunger. And nine is the cylinder of the second hydraulic cylinder. Now let us count the number of pairs. First we have a revolute pair here, a hinge. Number two would be the sliding pair or prismatic pair that allows the plunger to slide back and forth in the cylinder. Number three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine are all pin joints or revolute pairs. Number 10 would be a sliding pair between the plunger and cylinder. And number 11 would be a revolute pair over here. So we have nine links and 11 pairs. All pairs have a single degree of freedom. So now we can switch it into our formula, the Grubler's criteria, and it yields us nine links minus one which is the chassis or the fixed link multiplied by three because each of them in a two-dimensional space will have three degrees of freedom minus 11 pairs absorbing two degrees of freedom each so the formula tells us that this is a two degree of freedom system and uh, this is not surprising because there are two things that we want to do we want to raise and lower the bucket independent of tilting the bucket like this. And if we keep this in mind, the functionality of our mechanism, uh, in that case, it gives us a easier way, a trick to find the degree of freedom of a real life mechanism. If you want to do two independent things, you would need two independent prime movers. Either they will be electric motors or IC engines or in this case, say hydraulic cylinders, in some cases maybe pneumatic cylinders. And just by counting them, we can make an educated guess about the degree of freedom of that mechanism. 